Gentlemen, what's good? Uh, tonight, I want to talk about a topic that is important to me. And it's important to me because it's something that has resonated in my life. Uh, where I came across this was from my gym. Um, and I realized that in my lifetime, realistically, as a man, nobody gives a shit about you except you. And until you actually achieve something in life, you're you're just not going to experience the life that you want for yourself. And as a man today, you're told that you're supposed to somehow depend on other people to give you the results that you want. And what I'm telling you today right now is that nobody cares. And you're going to have to work harder. Nobody cares. And you're going to have to work harder. And let me show you where I got this from. Uh, it's a thing from my gym. One of the models we had. Uh, yeah, this was one of the things that um, I realized when I was going through a difficulty in life, being at my gym has been my uh, my church, basically. My, my gym has been my church for the last five years. The guys at my gym, the owners, everything there has gotten me through a tremendous amount of things. Um, and... One of these days I'll get into my gym and the owners and these guys and who they are and why they're so inspirational to me. But let me touch on some of my personal stories here or just personal experience as to why I know that nobody gives a shit and nobody cares as a man. Uh, when I went through some of the most difficult times in my life, the most difficult time in my life, when I was in seminary here in Pittsburgh. And I had been accused of all types of shit. Um, my, I was married when I came into Pittsburgh. Okay. And if you guys want to know my previous stories prior, you can go look at, I, I literally have videos, videos called my story part one and part two. I haven't finished part three or four yet and I'll get to those. But, um, what, I went through was uh, things where I was accused right of being somebody I wasn't and when I went through when I, when I was in seminary let me just real quickly when I was in seminary oh, well I was married to a BPD chick and I have a child with her who I love and um, I've been working through that in life and to this day I'm still dealing with that stuff but when I was in seminary, I was, I think, two and a half, what was I? I was getting on a few years married with this person. And I had experienced all different types of shit. Um, basically, I'd realized that this person was having more sex than me. And I was working for a church. I was a youth minister prior to coming into uh, seminary here in Pittsburgh. And when I realized that she was fucking other dudes... Uh, and women, I don't give a fuck. I'll tell you, you were, um, that I felt this need to forgive because I was in this different mind frame and it was the most ridiculous thing looking back on it. But, um, I'm going to stop trying to say, um, as much as I can. I don't know why I do that. I'm a public speaker. And I say, um, cause I'm talking to a fucking computer screen, but these computer screens now, and I'm not realizing this is where the audience is now. Like I, the largest audience I've ever spoke to was about 400 people in real life. And me looking at this computer screen right now, or this, this cam, I could potentially reach way more than that. And I have to get that in my mind. And so I'm working on my public speaking. Okay. Um, um, there it is. <laughs> so uh, I, I, I basically at, at, at seminary, I had gone through a living hell 
this person that I was married to had accused me of all these, had, I don't know what she accused me of, but the seminary took her side. Next thing you know, she had a woman, she had a lawyer through the woman's shelter representing her. And I burnt through my life savings because she had a free attorney and it was the worst experience of my life. I had, I was still blue pilled, still beta, um, never really alpha. I was alpha for, I don't know. I was alpha and then beta. And then I don't know how to even gauge that f fucking thing. Be honest with you. I, uh, when I went through seminary, I realized that that whole experience was meant to teach me to get to a certain point in life where I'm at now. And now I realize that I have lived a quintessential red pill experience. And I'm really grateful to have come into this community. And I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to grift. I'm not trying to like sell my shit. I'm just trying to join the conversation and say, I, I think I have something to offer here that is genuine and, and true. And, uh, so excuse me, it's late night. I've had a very busy day. Um, trying to make some things happen in my life doing shit. Um, but yeah, so nobody cares work harder is the main part of this whole, this, th that's the whole thing in this whole video is as a man, nobody wants to hear you complain. And I know this because even when I was wrongfully accused of beating my ex-wife, she had a, and I don't, I wasn't even necessarily confused. It wasn't even necessarily accused. Excuse me. I was, she had received that lawyer through the woman's shelter and the woman's shelter people knew that she really never was really beaten. They just offered her services because she was a woman. And it was like, what the fuck was that about? And I know what that is now. It's women looking out for themselves, right? It's the kind of centric social order. It's the uh, Uber Alice. It's the, like, we're going to look out for each other regardless. And her attorney, I remember, like, just... Even my attorney, I had hired a female attorney and uh, purposefully because I wanted to, I, I thought that would be a great way to combat. And even my, her, my attorney told me, you realize she's going to ring you, put you through the ringer and there's nothing you're going to be able to do because this is just the way it is. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, how am I supposed to, I don't know how this is what I have to deal with. So excuse me, but dry contacts, but um, yeah, anyway, and I had written emails to my family. I had written emails to clergymen that I was involved with in the past. And it was like, at this point, people were just, once they realized that the <laughs> sisterhood Uber Alice, the kind of such a social letter got their claws into me, they backed off. Everybody backed off. And I didn't know this until I had become red pill aware to, uh, until I had discovered the Rolo Tomasi, the Richard Cooper, and I'll just leave it there. Um, you know, and love or hate those guys, those guys are making moves and, oh, well, they're, 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 they're helping people. They're helping men, especially like myself. Um, uh, now I'm in a position where I'm now changing my career path because of it um last when the, this whole COVID thing had hit and i basically had time on my hands i was fortunate enough to work for a company that was still paying me and i had all these time on my hands i uh <laughs> i was i was working seven days a week spinning my wheels just sort of sleepwalking through life and <clears throat> had time to kind of get into delve into like some self-help shit right and i found these guys and it has been nothing but uh tremendous for me i got myself in physical shape i'm now in the process of 1099 with um 
an insurance company, excuse me, my contacts are really dry, 1099 with an insurance company that I'm working towards uh, being uh, an independent worker, getting out of the workforce, because believe me, um, here I am with the um, but believe me, I work in mental health. I worked in mental health. I've worked for churches. Neither one of them wanted me there as a man or even as just more of a masculine man. It was like there was no room there for me to grow in any of those aspects at all. And so I had to make room and I had to, or I had to make moves. And in those moves, I had to learn to network with other men, right? It was like, okay, you know this guy, you know this guy, you know this guy. It was a chain link reaction for me to get where I'm going. And right now I'm in a situation where I have a really good potential and it's all going to be based on competency, all competency on my performance, on my ability to perform, to make money, to do this and that. And you know what? I'm totally fine with it. Like I'll be useless to these people if I can't make money, but if I can, I'm going to do really well and I'm completely fine with it. It's meritocracy. It's a it's a merit based system where if you perform, you do well and you receive what you get, and that's very appealing for me because I w I had been working for a school for the last four years, and I'm not gonna lie, like there was in this company. This is non prof company. It has multiple locations. It has five different locations here in Pittsburgh. It's the best the most prestigious nonprofit organization to work for. And in the entire organization, there's only one man that has one position of authority. He's the head guy of the entire place. And in all the five or six, four, five, three, four locations, and there's four or five locations, there's literally zero men with authority positions. And they... They don't realize it, but they run the men out of town because in my position at my job, where I was at, I I worked in a place where in America, I was, I was one of the best workers there. Still am. I mean, currently. Well, no, I'm not there anymore. I just recently quit. But I was uh, a trainer. I trained all the employees on crisis management, right? I trained, uh, I gave presentations, I trained multiple programs, I worked with the kids, I had the best relationship with all the kids, I was tremendous, and yet the leadership never thought once about putting me in a position of, lead, of authority, because one, they were hung up on you having a certain degree, which it's not worth getting a $50,000 degree for a $20,000 raise, it's just not worth it. Or even a ten thousand dollar raise, so um, basically, at this job that I'm at, right? It's like they did not value me, and in, 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 in regards to my position, because as as value as valuable as I was, and me and there was there have been some of my best friends now. And uh, that I that I'm really close with now, um, seven, eight, nine, ten other men that have all left because they're they're so sick of being pigeon held and not being able to like climb anything and and become successful, be, and and not be recognized for their success. So basically, in this position where I worked, it was like, all right, so. The, in America, there's 170, 167 million jobs in America. Out of those 167 million jobs, 2 million American workers will work in a workplace where, where they will experience violence, right? Well, that's what the place where I worked. And even though I worked there, they were still running the men out of town, even though they realized, they, or they didn't realize that as women were getting into that position of power, they didn't realize like, holy shit, we're losing the men because we don't want to give them any authority, but we need them to run everything, run everything. Right. And the men were running everything. And that's what we were doing. We, we were the guys who were dealing with all the violence 
implementing all the situations, becoming the game plan. Every time they had meetings, they would like talk for an hour and a half and then realize that the guy, the seven, eight guys in the building were the ones that were going to deal with the problem. Um, anyway, I'm going off on a tangent here a little bit, but my, my point on this whole thing is as a man today, nobody cares, right? Even if, especially in the workforce, as more and more women are coming into power, they're not going to give a shit about you. They just can't. So, and I've experienced that personally. It's like, I've experienced being one of the most significant men in the entire building, workers in the entire building, and not ever being uh, properly rewarded or even, you know, have a sense of gratitude for it. Um, so yeah, anyway, that's where I'm at with this video. Um, I don't want to take it too far, but what you're going to have to realize is as a man today, nobody gives a shit about you unless you are significantly making money, making muscles, right? And just killing it in life. And I could tell you with that last job, the only time anybody in that those positions realized or had any level, and this is a non-profit organization, and I decided to leave and do 1099, like I said, the only time they ever really looked at me with admiration was when I said, I'm enough, I'm tired of this, and I'm leaving, and I'm going to go do and make my own money, and here's how. And I... That was finally when people looked at me and were like, that's when they were like, oh, wow. So, um, yeah, nobody cares. Work harder. Um, go to the gym. Okay. Make muscle. Figure out how to make money. Maybe work for yourself. Um, and also... Don't, don't deal with shit. Don't deal with shit that you hate. And that was one of the things that I had been uh, that becoming a red pill guy this year at my job. I realized I'm not dealing with this shit anymore. I'm shaking his camera, but I'm not dealing with this shit anymore. And uh, so those are the things that I encourage you with here. And uh, we'll leave it at that. We're at 17, 18 minutes. Yeah, there's that. All right, later.